Reporting Committee will call our meeting to order. Uh, first item we have is Senator Petty would like to introduce her pages. Senator Petty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, girls, would you stand up, please? So I have two pages here today. Uh, this is Vivian on right there, raving at us. And, uh, and this is Layla. Vivian goes to Resurrection in Kansas City, Kansas, and Layla goes to St. Agnes in, in uh, Overland Park. And uh, they are both sixth graders, and they're here as pages for me today. So, girls, glad to have you here. like to also recognize Senator Kirshen, and Senator Kirshen has some pages today. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm really pleased to have a group with us today, and we have uh, one student from Cheney and four from Clearwater. And uh, I'll read their names off. Connie Walter. Is she here? Alex Easley. They must be outside. There's a few here yet. There you are, guys. We was looking for you. So, <laughs> so Connor and Alex Easley, that, stand up as I read your name. Alex Smith and Maddox Hare. Har. Thank you for coming. And Chairman, they were in tax meeting, the last meeting here, and sitting in the last of the whole thing. And I asked them, <laughs> I asked them, what did you learn from the committee today? And they told me, you got a lot of debt. <laughs> Did I leave somebody out? Okay. Yeah, I think the, the young lady sitting there. Okay. Hope? Is it hope? There you go. There you go. <laughs> Too many of you to keep track of, especially when there's some outside and some inside, so... Welcome all you uh, pages to uh, Senate Ways and Means. Good to have you today. Uh, committee, uh, we had a motion yesterday and then we had a substitute motion from Senator Hawk and we need to just clarify what your motion was, Senator Hawk. I think there's a little confusion. Uh, I... I never know exactly what I do, but I can tell you what I intended to do, <laughs> which I think was the same thing that Senator Fagg was getting at. And uh, essentially, if there is a bill that was out there uh, that would cause us to have to deal with uh, whether we, we get our accounting straight and, and pay that educational payment off that we had moved in, into um, the the following year instead of the year where it was supposed to occur. So the intent of my motion was instead of waiting till omnibus, if we found out there wasn't a bill out there, that we would uh, then go ahead and pass out the education budget as the uh, chairman Solentrop had suggested initially with that. So have we found out, uh, Mr. Chairman, whether there's a bill out there? I don't know that we have, no. Uh, and David, does that clarify for you? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think the, the question was that whether or not the substitute motion by Senator Hawk included the deletion of the 199 million and review at Omnibus or earlier, or if that remains in the budget. So, Mr. Chairman, my intent was not to delete it, but if we needed to reconsider it, not doing that at Omnibus, but doing it earlier, whatever earlier could be today. And if there is not a bill, I would would uh, suggest that we go ahead and, and uh, reconsider that and, and pass the education budget out as suggested with only that uh, first note that was on there. Okay, thank you. So. The motion was, uh, substitute motion was replacing the motion by Senator Solentromp. So, Senator Solentromp, uh, um, I guess I would ask you if, if, if you were understanding the motion the way Senator Hawk had made it, and are we okay the way we are, or did, did you have something to... Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, my intent, my motion was to not fund that for this year, and 
wait until next year to make that adjustment. That was my motion. Okay, so I guess if, if you wanted to reconsider your motion, we would have to have a, uh, a reconsider motion in order to address Senator Hawke's motion that I guess the confusion was around. Well, I, if I may, my motion was to, to not make the adjustment. As I understand Senator Hawke's motion, I think really needs to be restated and revoted. Mine is to not pay it. His is to reconsider it in some form or fashion at a later time. So Dave, I don't know what you think, but I think the question is on the, on the substitute motion about are we paying it or are we not? Senator McGinn. Thank you. I tried to follow in uh, yesterday on WebEx, and it got very confusing at the end. So if I could have David or someone, Shirley or whoever is here, or Amy, uh, explain what does it mean if we pay it? I mean, is it part of the controversy, I believe, that occurred last year, or is it a missed payment? Is it a missed payment? It's the payment that's postponed every year. That you, they pay it uh, in first of July instead oh, of the end of it's June. A tricky math one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Got it. Yep. That's that's what it is. Senator Alley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And it definitely was confusing. And I think I led a little bit of that confusion yesterday when I said that there may be a uh, another bill out there, and I've searched and I have not found that bill. However, I tend to agree with Senator Sullentrop that let's go ahead and uh, I would vote to go ahead with Senator Sullentrop's motion. And then if there is a, a and I am certain that there will be some type of, um, some type of a bill that will come through to pay this off, whether it is in 22 or 23, I'm pretty certain that will, that will happen. So I would uh, recommend that we go ahead with Senator Solentrop's motion to delete it from this year's, or from a 2022. Okay, so what, what we would need, uh, we'd need a, a motion to reconsider the motion from Senator Hawk and address that. Okay, so we have a motion by Senator Solentrop to reconsider. If I may, and Dave, you can correct me if, my, if I'm wrong, I think my motion is clear. It was, the re, it was the substitute motion that was making the change. So if the substitute motion maker wants to modify his motion, then I think that clears it up. And again, Dave, if you want to... <laughs> Senator Hawk, um, do you want to modify your motion? If, if not, we're going to have to do a reconsider. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what the the ED. I I, I want to uh, make the payment and get the accounting set straight, so we're not playing that kind of accounting game with it. And I think I disagree with Senator Solentrop. Uh, I'm not sure procedurally what the right way is to do it. It. Um, it would uh, seem to me that, uh, you know, I, I could make a motion that we um, actually concur with the governor and pay that off in 2022, uh, as she has suggested in her budget. And I suppose we could um, vote that up or down, and maybe that would get us to a, a thing. And then I'll probably, assuming if that fails, I'll probably make a motion that we reconsider that uh, at at uh, omnibus, but if that would help, where we're at today and right now is either you can amend your motion, or we'll have someone make a motion to reconsider and on your motion. Uh, I, I'm happy to uh, to just make a motion that we we go ahead and uh, strike that item too, which would in in essence uh, uh, pay that off. 
uh, in 2022. And so I'll make I'll make that motion and let the group vote that, and then maybe that'll make it clear of how. We, well, if we're already there, then I won't do that. Okay. Well, I don't want to disagree with video. <laughs> Um, maybe the maybe the best thing is to have uh, Senator Solentrop uh, move to uh, put his thing in place of mine. Okay, so we're, Senator Hawk's not wanting to alter his uh, emotion, so I'm going to recognize Senator Clay's. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Having voted on the prevailing side, I move that we reconsider the motion of yesterday regarding the twelfth payment, whatever we want to call it. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Solentrump. Any discussion? Senator Petty. Sorry, I've had a question for a while. So I'm, I'm glad you that we went to procedural because I was asked, my question was procedural because it seems like we were talking about doing something, but we had it was procedurally we had done something yesterday. So this is actually a one time payment. So it's that we're talking about. It's not a concur, reconcurring, it's a one time for. Uh, 20 in the 2022 budget and it was I, I guess I might uh, maybe this I appreciate uh, Senator Clay's motion because uh, I don't believe yesterday I mean in the materials that we had to look at yesterday from the uh, dealing with the Department of Education there wasn't another item listed this was just it was this was added in a motion by the by Senator Solenprof after the discussion that was originally started by Senator Alley. Would I be correct in saying that? Yes, I believe that's correct. Okay, because it came up about removing item two, but there was never an item two um, in the in the materials that came over from the Education Committee and their recommendation, the Senate Education Committee that came to us. So there never was an item two. It was just this came about in the discussion that we had as a committee. So now we've had, we've gone procedurally back to um, having, the Senator saying having voted on the prevailing side, although we didn't count those but uh, at the time. Um, and so now we're back to that, uh, having voted on the prevailing side. Correct. We're voting whether or not to uh, go ahead with Senator Hawke's uh, motion or not, reconsidering that motion. Thank you. Senator McGinn. Do we have a motion and a second now? I mean, Correct. Discussion? Yes. All right, thank you. So I'm just trying to also understand why we did this in the first place. Was it because we were broke, or is there other mechanical issues in place, such as um, capers or money touching the school and coming back. Why did we do this in the first place? Amy, can you answer that? Amy? Mr. Chairman, my recollection is that this was uh, due to a shortfall uh, for cash flow purposes. So this happened a number of years ago. So this helped us in the end of the year for cash flow purposes to make the payment in July instead of June, but for the USDs to reflect it as if they received them in June versus July. Right. So we were broke, and that's why we did it. And I don't know, it looks like the second bullet says to just go ahead and put it in this year. And then we're back to not playing the funny game June 1st or July 1st, June 30th. So I'm trying to understand now that we have money, we don't just get back and put this back in order the way it was. Senator Solendrop. The reason and rationale for not doing it today, now, is so that we get through the consensus revenue estimate uh, that's going to come in, so that we can get through the entire budget that's going to come in. There's health and human services issues that we've got to fund. There's a lot of questions. So I'm simply saying we should not do it now and delay it for consideration at omnibus. That's my, that's my, that was my motion. I didn't say not do it ever. I said consider it at omnibus. 
Any other discussion? Senator Petty. Um, since the Senator mentioned the consensus revenue, uh, didn't we just get um, revenues for uh, this last month and we are 18 million point seven up uh, to the good. So um, we, we, we have a strong revenue base and, and I would compliment this uh, committee in ways and means at looking at uh, taking care of uh, the, just like, which was reflected in this earlier, which we'd already paid off, but the, the, uh, the CAPERS layering payments, which we, which we had already addressed before um, the uh, uh, Education Committee looked at this budget, and it was, of course, in the governor's budget, but, but we, as a, a Ways and Means Committee, had already taken care of that. Um, and we've uh, looked at every, it seems like almost every area where we um, felt that we could take away some of our uh, debt and address it. And so this, as Senator McGinn referred to, is something we did when we were broke. Um, and now, and I mean, I wasn't here at that time, and neither were a few of you as well. But now we're in a position and we're making those wise decisions. This would seem to be a fair, wise decision to do as well. Senator Solentrump. Mr. Chairman, if I may, the CAPERS payment was uh, costing us 7.5% interest on that payment. And that's one of the reasons we made the immediate payment to get it out of that uh, funding uh, issue and into the actual account itself. So that was a daily cost to the to the uh, budget to withhold that, and and that's one of the principal reasons why we paid that. Again, I I am not making a motion to not pay this. I'm simply making the motion to delay the decision to not pay this until omnibus. That's all it is. Thank you. Other discussion. Okay, seeing none, so the vote to reconsider of the motion of Senator Hawk, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion Aye. carries. Do you want to be recorded, Tom? No. Okay. Senator Petty does, okay. So now we're back on uh, to... Okay, so now we need a vote on um, Senator Hawke's uh, motion, uh, his uh, substitute motion, whether we're in favor of that or against that. Any questions on that? Senator Hawke. Um, I'm happy to read what my original motion was, if that would be helpful. That'd be fine. And make a quick, uh, my original motion was to, to review the delayed school payment at Omnibus or earlier if possible, I think was what my motion was. And as a rationale, it was based on Senator Alley thinking that if there was a bill out there uh, that we would deal with that bill and that would affect whether we did it. Um, and uh, so my hope was, if we found out there was no bill, that we would then not review this at Omnibus. We would do it now. So that was the intent of my motion. But I, but I also assumed we'd probably have to take action on that if we found out there was no bill. Okay. Any other discussion? Senator McGinn. Not to frustrate the chair, but I mean, there's still always the option to review it at, when we package the mega bill, and then you can re, then you can say move it on to all of us. But just a suggestion. It's, we're getting in the weeds. I don't disagree. <laughs> Any other discussion on the Hawk motion, Senator Alley? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Understanding then is we're reconsidering Senator Hawke's motion. 
Senator Hawk's motion deletes it out of this bill. I understood. I understood. He said we will reconsider it at omnibus or before. That means it's deleted out of this bill. Is the way I understood that. I don't believe that. I, I I don't believe that's correct. Uh, I think it's uh, his 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 motion is to leave it in there and then consider it earlier or at omnibus. And that Senator Sullentrump had made a motion that it's out until we review it at omnibus. That's the difference. So what's on the table right now for us to vote on? Is Senator Hawk's motion, which is to leave the money in and review before or at omnibus. Is that the way you read that, Senator Hawk? It's to keep it in, but to review it at omnibus or before. Okay, everybody clear? So the vote is going to be whether you're in favor of Senator Hawk's motion or not. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Okay. We'll have division. All those in favor of Senator Hawke's motion, raise your hand. Those opposed? Senator Hawke's motion carries. Okay, we will move on to uh, the approval of the minutes from January 25th, 26th, 27th, and February 1st, 8th, and 9th. Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the approval of the minutes for January 25th, 26th, 27th, February 1st, 8th, and 9th. We have a motion and a second by Senator Hawk. Any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we'll move on to our budget reports, and we'll start out with corrections and public safety uh, committee. Uh, and the first one we will have is the Emergency Medical Service Board. The agency requested a revised estimate of 2.6 million all from special revenue funds. This is an increase of 81,641 above the approved amount. There is an increase in expenditures and salaries and wages of 5,766, an increase of contractual services of 3,789, and an increase in aid to local units of 79,311. There are decreases in expenditures and commodities of $1,732 and capital outlay of 5,493. There were no changes to the 14 FTE positions. The significant increase in aid to local units includes the EMS revolving grant, which had sli slightly increased in 2022, partially attributed to some of the resumption of the operations following the complete shutdown of district courts due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Governor concurs and uh, the Senate subcommittee concurs with the governors on 2022. Move on to, well, with the following exceptions. I gotta turn my paper over. Subcommittee recommends the committee review the status of funding received from the American Rescue uh, Plan through the SPARC Executive Committee process during omnibus uh, for projects the agency has applied for in fiscal 2022. The subcommittee recommends the committee review the current situation of available ambulances to be purchased during omnibus of 2022. Currently, there is a shortage of ambulances due to the supply chain distribution and lack of computer chips. And the subcommittee recommends the committee review the Medicaid reimbursement rate for the ambulance service, in particular the air service. 
Questions on 22? Senator Petty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on that number three, did it doesn't say air. Did you add that? No, but that's what we said the other day uh, when we when I I had suggested we put that in. It was because there. I think the ground uh, has already been addressed, and they had left out the air for the reimbursements. And I would ask Senator McGinn if 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 you've done any of that in in, in your KDHE. Do you remember? On, on the ambulance, uh, the Medicaid reimbursement. Okay, that's why it was brought and was put in at the end here because the house has addressed it in the in the ground transportation, but the air was left out. So we don't want to. I mean, I I I would feel more comfortable if we just rate for ambulance services and that would cover ground and air instead of just us specifying air. Even though, I mean, well, it, we can, yeah, it's both. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Twenty-two. Okay, I'll move to twenty-three. The agency requests two point six million, all from special revenue funds. This is a decrease of twelve thousand five hundred twelve below the twenty twenty-two revised estimates. There's an increase of expenditures in all categories, including 45,930 in contractual services, 16,953 in capital outlay. There's a decrease in aid to local units of 79,311. This amount is carried forward from 21 into 22, and there's no changes in the 14 FTE positions. The increase in contractual services includes Increased rents and, and increased legal fees due to the anticipated in, increased hearings. The increase in capital outlay is for replacement of a com, computer equipment. The governor concurs. The subcommittee concurs with the following notation. Subcommittee recommends the committee review the Medicaid reimbursement rate for the ambulance services. Any questions on 23? Seeing none, I make a motion we approve the 2223 uh, Emergency Medical Service Board, second by Senator Clays. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Next, we'll have the State Fire Marshal. The agency requests uh, estimated revised estimate of 6.4 million all from special revenue funds. This is the same as the amount approved in 21, and there are no changes in the changes to the expenditure categories. The governor concurred, subcommittee concurred with the governor with the following notation. Subcommittee recommends the committee review the status of funding from the American Rescue Plan Act through the SPARC Executive Committee during omnibus for projects the agency has applied for. Moving on to 23, agency requests 6.9 million, all from special revenue funds for 2023. This is an increase of 482,220 above the 22 revised estimates. The request includes an enhancement in salaries and wages of 410,071 for recruitment and retention. There is a decrease in expenditures on the training materials from the new data servers, servers that were purchased in 2022. The Kansas Firefighter Recruitment and Safety Grant is not funded for fiscal year 2023. The grant provides no match funds for volunteer part-time departments across the state for personnel, for personal protection equipment. Physicals not covered by insurance and support of junior firefighters program. The governor recommends expenditures of 6.9 million all from special revenue funds for 23. This is a decrease of 60,341 below the agency's request. Significant items the governor recommended included the following. Recruitment and retention, the governor recommends 249,730 beginning in fiscal year 23 for recruitment and retention. The governor did not recommend this recruitment and retention. Kansas Firefighter Recruitment and Safety Grant Program, the governor recommends increasing expenditures by 100,000 from the fire marshal's fee fund to restore the Kansas 
Firefighter Recruitment and Safety Grant Program. The subcommittee concurs with the governor. Questions on 22-23? Senator Hawk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm kind of confused about um, what was the enhancement request and was it in recruitment and retention? So the governor didn't recommend it, but then on your second bullet, there, she's recommending reinstating that. Senator Hawk, they requested four hundred and uh, ten thousand seventy one, and the governor approved uh, two hundred forty nine seven thirty. And it, it is for some retention and recruitment. So it just wasn't the full amount. Wasn't the full amount, correct. She's still supporting that they they uh, implement that grant program. So good. Yeah, Thank you. Partially funding. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions? Seeing none, I would make a motion we approve the 22-23, second by Senator Clays. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we'll move on to Department of Corrections. The agency requests a revised estimate of 486 million seven, including 426 million from SGF for the entire Kansas Department of Corrections system for fiscal year 22. These are expenditures for the KDOC, Kansas Correctional Inst Industries, and the eight adult correctional facilities and the Kansas Juvenile Correctional Complex. This is an all funds decrease of 15.8 million, including an SGF decrease of 18.6 million, below the fiscal 22 approved amount. The revised estimates include 3,321 FTE positions for KDOC systems, which is a decrease of 12.5 FTE positions below the 22 approved number. The positions decreases mainly at the Norton Correctional Facility. The agency requests a revised operating budget totaling 462.5 million, including 419.4 million SGF in fiscal year 22. This is an all funds decrease of 18.1 million and an SGF decrease of 16.6 million below the 22 approved amount. The de decrease is primarily attributed to Decreased expenditures from the evidence-based juvenile programs account of 18.6 million and a contractual inmate and contracted inmate beds of 1.3 million. The decrease is partially offset by the agency's inmate phone charges, expansions of the post-release housing program and the information technology outreach staff. The supplemental recruit Request also includes overtime expenditures and shrinkage reductions among the correctional facilities. The fiscal year 2022 revised estimates include capital improvement expenditures for the KDOC system totaling 24.2 million, including 6.6 .6 million SGF. This is an all fund increase of 2.4 million and SGF decrease of 1.9 million from the 22 approved amount. The increase is primarily, primarily attributed to increased expenditures, all from the special revenue funds for re routine repair and rehab projects at the correctional facilities of 5.4 million. The agency budgeted 12.7 million for expansion projects at the Lansing and Winfield Correctional Facility involving substance abuse treatment centers and an assisted living unit. The governor recommends expenditures of 534.9 million, including 455.6 million SGF for the entire KDOC system in fiscal year 2022. This is an all funds increase of 48.2 million, including an SGF increase of 29.7 million above the agency's 2022 revised estimate. The recommendation includes 3,321 FTE positions, which is unchanged from fiscal year 22. 
The governor recommends operating budgets totaling $510.7 million, including $449 million SGF in fiscal year 22. This is an all funds increase of $30.1 million, including an SGF increase of $13.1 million above the agency's 22 revised estimate. The increase is due to the the addition of 21.1 million SGF to the evidence-based juvenile programs account to restore the funding lapse in the previous budget cycle, 18.6 million from the Federal American Rescue Plan Act for implementation of the 24-7 initiative, 2.6 million SGF for salary increases among the community correction agencies and 6.7 million from the Pathway for Success Technical Educational Initiative. The increase is partially offset by decrease in expenditures due to the governor not recommending two of the agency's supplemental requests. The governor recommends 24.2 million, including 6.2 million SGF for capital improvements. This is unchanged from the agency's 2022 revised estimates. Senate subcommittee recommend recommendations with the following notations. We concur with the governor with the following notations. Subcommittee notes the that the governor recommended recommendation includes the additional 2.6 SGF to increase aid to the community corrections agencies for the purpose of salary increases in fiscal year 22 and recommends the Senate committee on ways and means review, review this addition the community corrections agencies are county government entities that receive grant funding from KDOC for community-based super, supervision of offenders serving felony probation. The subcommittee notes that the governor rec recommendation includes 6.7 million SGF for the Pathways for Success Initiative in fiscal year 22 and recommends the Senate Ways and Means Committee consider util utilizing ARPA fund money to offset the SGF for this purpose. The initiative provides technical education, equipment, and correctional facilities at the correctional facilities, including virtual welders, commercial driver's license stimulators, and mobile devices. The agency notes a request was submitted to, uh, to the appropriate SPARC advisory panel for this purpose. And basically what we were doing, we're just saying that if they are successful in getting these spark funds that we would not need to use SGF. Senator Petty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and so um, these two items, will we be looking at them at when? I would say that we'd probably look at them at Omnibus if, if we have the information. I think the spark deal, I can't remember when they said they would know on that, but... Uh, we should know by omnibus whether or not they've received SPARC funding for this and whether we need to fund it with SGF or SPARC. Along with that, I, I also, uh, for the 22 budget, I do have a proviso to be considered <coughs> on this. I think you have a copy of it. Senator Petty, would you like to explain your proposed uh, recommendation? Yes. So uh, you, if, as you were following along with uh, the chairman speaking about the 22 budget and the um, reinstatement of the funds in for the evidence-based juvenile programs, the $18.9 million, the, it's not actually spoken to in here, but in the budget materials, the governor... Um, did speak to um, of 21.1 million, I'm sorry. The governor did speak that, um, did recommend that 3.5 of that from that account be made available to JCAG. Um, and I think we're all familiar with that program. I have spoken to them. And because um, the Juvenile Justice Oversight Committee reviews and makes recommendation on any of the programs that they um, provide funding for, 
they actually would need um, a report from JCAG as to um, what they have done with that funding um, during the 22, uh, during this uh, budget period. So uh, the, propo the proviso language, as you see, would require the jobs, the jobs for America Graduate Kansas JCAG program to submit a report to the Juvenile Justice Over Oversight Committee uh, about the funds and how they've been used, and that report would be submitted to them by September the 30th. It would also include the number of youth serve and performance outcomes. So that's the proviso. Thank you. D did you talk to, to, to JAGK? I did. And they're okay submitting a report? Yes. A questions committee? Senator Hawk? Um, just to clarify, would this be a number three on the yellow page? It, it would be a number three proviso. On this? Yes, yes on, on 22, correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, if, if, I guess, and if Senator Petty, if you'd like to make a motion. Um, thank you. I will make a motion that we uh, add this, the propi proposed pr proviso to um, the Senate subcommittee recommendations for uh, 22. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Senator Hawk seconds. And discussion? Senator Alley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I, if I heard what you said, this 3.5 is included in the 21. Senator Petty. This a 3.5, right, would be coming out of that. Out of the 21. 21.1. It's not an addition to the 21. No, it is not. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I believe the three five has already been put in there. It's just uh, a reporting is all we're talking here is a report out for that three point five, which is required in the uh, uh, the juvenile program. Yes, you're correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. The com committee will move on to 2023. The agency requests 517.3 million, including 480 million SGF for the entire KDOC system for fiscal year 23s. These are expenditures for KDOC, Kansas Correctional Industries, aided all correctional facilities, and the Kansas Juvenile uh, Correctional Complex. This is an all funds increase of 30.7 million and a SGF increase of 54.5 million above the 23 revised estimates. The re request includes 3,405 FTE positions for the KDAOC system, which is an increase of 84 FTE positions above 2022 revised number. The positions the position increase is primarily at the Lansing and Winfield Correctional Facilities to support operation of a new substance abuse treatment center and an assisted living unit. The agency requests operating budgets totaling 505.1 million, including 480.4 million SGF for 2023. This is an all funds increase of 42.6 million, including an SGF increase of 60. 1.1 million above 2022 revised estimates. The increase is attributed to the agency's 20 enhancement request, which total 54.2 million SGF. The enhancements primarily include operating expenditures for a new substance abuse treatment centers and an assisted living unit at Lansing and Winfield Correctional Facilities and a reentry programs, replacement of revenue loss as a result of decreased inmate phone charges, and an increased staff for community corrections and parole services. The enhancement request also includes shrinkage reductions at five correctional facilities. The increase is partially offset by decreased expenditures from the evidence-based juvenile programs account and, and, for, and for the Athena 2 data system. 
The fiscal 2022 request includes capital improvement expenditures for the KDOC system, totaling 12.2 million, all from special revenue funds. This is a decrease of 12 million. including 6.6 .6 million SGF below the 2022 revised investment, revised amount. The decrease is primarily attributed to com completion of expansion projects in fiscal year 2022. The governor's recommendations, expenditures of 518.9 million, including 478.6 million SGF for the entire KDOC system in 23, this is an all funds increase of 1.5 million and an SGF decrease of 1.9 million from the agency's 23 request. The recommendation includes 3,420.1 FTE positions, which is an increase of 15.1 positions above the agency's request in 2023. The increase is due, the increase is due the additional, to the additional positions at Lansing and Winfield Correctional Facilities. The governor recommends operating budgets totaling 510.6 million, including 478.6 million SGF for fiscal year 23. This is an all funds increase of 5.5 million and an SGF decrease of 1.9 million from the agency's 23 request. The SGF decrease is due to the governor's not recommending several enhancement requests. The recommend, recommendation includes 33.9 million SGF to con continue the 24-7 pay initiative and 9.6 million operating expenditures for the newly established substance abuse treatment centers and the assisted living unit at Lansing and Winfield Correctional Facilities and 2.6 million for replacement of vehicles and, s and safety and security equipment utilized by correctional staff. The governor recommends 8.3 million for capital improvement expenditures throughout the KDOC system for 23. This is a decrease of 3.9 million below the agency's 23 request. The decrease is due to the governor's not recommending the agency's enhancement request to increase expenditures from the correctional institution's building fund. The Senate subcommittee recommendation Subcommittee concurs with the governor's recommendation for 23 with the following notations. The subcommittee notes that the governor's recommendation includes the addition of 8.4 million SGF to continue increasing aid to the community corrections agencies for purpose of salary increases in 2023 and recommends the Senate Committee on Ways and Means review this addition. Community corrections agencies are County government entities that receive grant funding from the KDOC for community-based supervisions of offenders serving felony probation. The subcommittee recommends the Senate Subcommittee on Ways and Means consider adding 625,761 SGF to demolish former minimum security honors camps at El Dorado and uh, Toronto and consider adding language to authorize such demolition for fiscal year 2023. These honor camps ceased operation in 2009. The subcommittee notes that the governor's recommendation includes 10 million SGF appropriated to the State Finance Council for conversion of certain KDOC employees, including juvenile correction officers and Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks uh, enforcement officers to the Kansas Police and Fire Retirement System in fiscal 23. The subcommittee recommends the Senate Committee on Ways and Means review this matter. This funding is provided for the purchase, purpose of increased employer contributions. If such KP and F conversion legislation is passed during the 2022 regular session. There are bills in the House Committee on Insurance and Pensions, HB 2713, and Senate Committee on Ways and Means, Senate Bill 524. If these would be in, implemented, the policy change uh, for the conversion. Questions on 23 and 22. Senator Hawk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to ask a question or make a comment about both in the 22 budget and the 20 three budget on community corrections. I noticed that uh, your 
putting that off, I assume, to omnibus to consider that and just wondered what the thinking was. I know our community corrections officers in two of the counties that I serve um, had had issues in terms of being able to keep and attract people because uh, we had provided additional money through the court system for um, the other probation services. So they were at a disadvantage. Just wondered what the thinking was about holding that off, if there's more information needed or we're just looking at it as a potential budget thing. Well, I, I don't think there was any intent of not making sure these salaries are increased. I think there was a lot of concern that we've put money in corrections for the last five years, and these folks have seen zero. Right. So I think the, the, the whole uh, purpose of notating this is to make sure that these folks do get salary increases. Uh, yes, I agree. So, so we're not taking that out of the budget. We're just reviewing it, so it's Correct. staying in there. Oh. To, to make sure, make sure that these folks get the raises this time. Okay, I'm I'm very happy with that. I misinterpreted that, and thinking you were taking it out, and there's, I certainly want to see that. No, there's no intent to take this out. I think we all agree that uh, they've missed out on the last two pay raises. Fantastic. Thank you. Other questions? Seeing none, I make a motion we approve the 22-23 uh, Department of Corrections, um, second by Senator Clays. Questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Committee, next we'll have a hearing on House Bill 2591, repealing the State General Fund and Conservation Fee fund transfers to the abandoned oil and gas well fund. And we'll start with an overview by David Weiss. David. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good, good morning, committee. This is probably one of the bills few bills where like the bill brief is actually a little bit longer than the bill itself so but it's a little bit it's a little bit of background on house bill 2591 this bill actually repeals uh, ksa 2021 sub 55193 this was uh, relating to certain fund transfers that would go into the oil abandoned oil and gas uh, well fund um the statute would uh, direct a quarterly transfer hundred thousand dollars from the state general fund and two hundred thousand dollars from the conservation fee fund to the oil abandoned oil, oil and gas fund and the statute has prohibited the um, state general fund transfers to the fund since uh, fiscal year 2004. That's a recurring uh, thing in, in budget bills. And um, <clears throat> what happened last year, we had, if you might remember, House Bill 2000, uh, 2022. The legislature updated the state corporation commission's authority to regulate and determine responsibility for abandoned oil and gas wells. Uh, abolished the oil, uh, well plugging assurance fund and transferred all assets and liabilities to uh, the abandoned oil and gas well fund. And as part of that uh, House Bill uh, 2022, the legislature repealed KSA 55193. Uh, unfortunately, though, there was uh, at the time the mega bill, House Bill 2007, was going through the legislative process and through conference committee, and then it had updated that. Uh, statute to uh, prohibit transfers from the state general fund to the oil, abandoned oil and gas well fund in FY uh, 21, 22, and 23. And then that was as the bill, as House Bill 20, uh, 2022 was being signed by the governor on April 9th. That's actually the same time the, the legislature was adopting the uh, conference committee report to the mega bill last year. So it was just really just an issue of the timing because he had one, stat one bill repealing the statute and then another bill um, amending the statute so both of those had to be, uh, you know, we can't just determine what the legislature really intended to do on that. So we had to then list the repeal, but then also uh, list the, the amended statute in the statute books and have that as going forward. So really what all 2591 is doing is just kind of going back, cleaning up, um, you know, and effectuating the intent from House Bill 2022 and getting that repeal out. And there is no... The statute is not in the budget this year. I have checked a couple times to make sure. Uh, to, um, so this would just go ahead and 
fully effectuate House Bill two, uh, 2022 from last year and uh, repeal that transfer. And I will say that the House did pass this uh, bill 112 to zero on February 17th, uh, 2022. Thank you, David. Any questions for David? Seeing none, thank you, David. Uh, we have a uh, one proponent, Ryan Hoffman, the Director of Conservation Division, Kansas Corporation Commission. David, um, or Ryan, excuse me, welcome to committee. Well, uh, hopefully uh, I can be even briefer than David. Uh, brevity is something that I appreciate because uh, contrary to popular opinion, I don't enjoy hearing my own voice. Um, I really can't add much to what the revisor said about this. This is truly just a cleanup and uh, the KCC staff supports uh, the passage of this legislation and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Ryan Senator Hawk? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Uh, why did we originally transfer money from the state general fund and the conservation fund uh, into this for well plugging? It dates back to about 1995 or 1996. Uh, the legislature instituted a statutory abandoned well plugging program. And at that time, there were transfers from the state water plan fund, the state general fund, and the conservation fee fund, as well as a portion of the state's federal royalties. Over time, that would down to where it was just the transfer from the conservation fee fund, the federal royalties, uh, and then a transfer from the other fund that has been combined into uh, the abandoned oil and gas well remediation fund. And how many uh, unplugged wells do we have that we need to address? Currently, we have 5,477 documented orphaned wells. Uh, there are likely more than that that we are still in the process of, of documenting. And then how many do we plug per year? It depends on the year. I can say that uh, historically it, it had been in the 300 range. We started making some changes to how we uh, assess the program. And the numbers went down, um, but they were back up to 342 last fiscal year. So far this fiscal year, we have, I wrote it down because I figured I might get asked. Um, we do have 225 encumbered so far this year. We've plugged 156 of those to date. And then if we don't have these funds transferred, how do we pay for the uh, well plugging? Currently, there, there is uh, a balance of in excess of $5.3 million to plug abandoned wells. Um, and one of the things that we discussed as 2022 was making its way through the legislature last year is that because of these sweeping changes we made, uh, and I could detail those all again, but we, we essentially redid the whole way we contract to plug abandoned wells we had no real way of knowing exactly how much money we needed on an annual basis to plug. We wanted to wait and see how successful we were. Um, and uh, that's, that's something that we will be looking at here in the near future, whether that's a fee increase on some, some regard or an increase in financial assurance. And then, so if we're doing roughly 225 to 300 per year, it looks like it's gonna take us 12 or 15 years to get to the 5477 we don't have plugged, is that the plan or should we be doing that uh, more rapidly? I think the most important part is that we, we plug the wells based on their priority, their threat to the environment. There are some wells that were drilled very recently that have been abandoned that are not an environmental threat. And frankly, it probably wouldn't be very much to plug right now, but it would be more important for us to focus on areas where there's usable water, where the wells could be a public safety threat. So we that's one of the things that was part of that change in our process was, and every year we used to be able to come to the legislature and say, hey, we plugged 500, 600 wells. But it was, to me, it was more meaningful to come before you and say, yeah, we plugged 164 wells, but the 164 wells we plugged were really the ones that needed to be plugged. Um, thank you. Thanks for that information. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator McGinn. I just need clarity on, um, it keeps talking about how it's transferred from the general fund, from the conservation fee fund. How is the conservation fee fund funded? The conservation fee fund's primary source of revenue is from mills assessed against the production of oil and natural gas. And then there are also some permitting fees that go into that fund. Okay, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Fagg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was wondering who decides what wells you plug? And is that an application, or what's the process there? It's a great question. We actually, as part of our legislative report, we prioritize the wells that are 
the most serious threat to be plugged, 1A being the highest. It can be public safety, it could be groundwater, it could be surface water, and then they are prioritized from that to 1A, B, 1A, 1B, or 1C, and then there's a, a level two as well. And typically speaking, we try to plug the highest priority uh, each year, and we have well plugging supervisors in each of our four districts. They work with their supervising geologist to put together the plans, and um, that's that's how we decide. Uh, the, the local geologists decide. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you, Ryan. Uh, committee also point out that we have written only from Ed Cross, Kansas Independent Oil and Gas Association. Are there any opponents? Seeing none, are there any neutrals? Seeing none. Uh, committee, uh, I think this is a non-controversial bill and I think uh, maybe we all just uh, kick it out. Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, without objection, I move that the committee recommend House Bill 2591 favorably, and the item being of a non-controversial nature, it be placed on the consent calendar. I have a motion, a second by Senator Fagg. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Committee, that uh, concludes our work. Uh, Senator Ho uh, Solentrump. Call me Senator Hawk. No, no. <laughs> Real quick. He's always he's always Maybe asking. Maybe an age. Maybe he's, an age. He's he's always sticking his hand up about time we're ready to walk out the room. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, working with research um, and the chair, um, we put together a line item uh, outline, which you're going to get uh, an electronic copy of. The um, ninety nine percent of the SCF uh, budgeted funds. You'll also get the all funds as well. So you're going to get three documents. The uh, SGF is green in this case. This is yellow, and transfers in and out are laid out simplistically. So when you go through these, it's going to give you the agency, the program, the level of funding, 21, 22, 23. It's going to give you the five-year average. And so it's very easy to match these changes up based on what the governor's uh, recommending. So you can pretty much go down, instead of going through all these reports or saving your notes or whatever, you can go down through here and take a look and see, well, is there a program in here that's seen its useful life? We don't need it. Is there a program in here that we need to add, subtract, um, or anything of that nature? So I would hope you look through these. Uh, the chair is wanting to, uh, again, uh, work through the budget, get uh, some idea of where we're at. And uh, unless Amy's got any comments, uh, this is a couple documents that I think will serve you well. Senator McGinn. So do we finish Friday on reports and then will we be starting next week packaging the budget? Yes, uh, we should. I think the last report is Friday. And then we will start Monday and start packaging. And we'll have a list of things that we've kind of listed so far. And then in addition to that, if, 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 if everyone would want to look and see if they have any other ideas or, uh, you know, things that we could look at, uh, I suggest that all the committee members, you know, look through uh, these uh, different uh, funds and see if there's you know, ideas, and, and we're just going to ascertain, uh, you know, what, once we get through our list and anybody else has got, got an idea on something, we'll, we want to hear them. Senator Solentrump. Real quick, I want to thank Amy and Research for all her work. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Amy. Uh, any other business? Seeing none, we are adjourned.